What's up? It's me, Don Tolliver. If I could describe the open ear, but I would describe it as very seamless. It's like you clip it onto your ear, and then sometimes you can forget it's there, but it's not going anywhere because it's like clipped. It's kind of crazy. If I could bring my music with me wherever I go and just make life easier and seamless without interruption, to be able to have the music on hand like that without any interruptions would, would be great. Check out Bose.com for more. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. At Mint Mobile, we like to do the opposite of what Big Wireless does. They charge you a lot, we charge you a little. So naturally, when they announced they'd be raising their prices due to inflation, we decided to deflate our prices due to not hating you. That's right. We're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in detail. Yes. <laughs> A question. I am ready. Uh, reports indicate that the U.S. Women's World Cup soccer team yes. are disrespectful to the anthem and they don't pay attention to it. About 75% of them look groff about it and didn't care. And are, are, Do we have a bunch of head cases on that team? I think we have a very, uh, you know, uh, Awake uh, soccer team, and they're not uh, they're not used to you know you got uh, Rapinoe there. Megan Rapapapa. Uh, Megan's a kind of a team leader, and I don't think she's much for the anthem. So yeah. uh, I, I think that what do they want? The uh, are they grousing about their money still? Uh, they're getting paid pretty good. Yeah. They're getting a lot of money, but I don't, they don't know. not bringing in so many. But uh, they won. They beat I don't Vietnam. Think I don't think. Yeah, they beat Vietnam. I don't think it was a. I don't think that evened up the rivalry, but uh, anyway, they uh, <laughs> Costa uh, they, won, bleep and they were supposed Rica. to win about eight to nothing, but everybody still treated it. It's again that double standard of men's and women's athletics responses. This is some glorious victory over a bunch of people who probably played soccer for 20 minutes with a funding of $100 uh, against the U.S., but we can't say a disappointing 3 to nothing victory over a terrible Vietnam team. we got to write about how great and glorious it was. So. Okay. But I'm not going to have any problem one way or another with the women's soccer because I will not watch a minute. Neither will I. I don't care. I don't care that much about the Men's World Cup, which is played against nations that care about the sport. There's about three countries that give a damn about actually trying to put a good women's team together. What's that square thing down yeah, there? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't think anybody's kneeling or anything. Oh, I think, I think they were, actually. Someone, we did have a kneeler Let me double check. But I, I don't know if we had a kneeler, but they, oh, were, they weren't. They were not uh, properly. Uh, they weren't enthused. They weren't enthused. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, we got that element out there that gets, you know what? I'm glad they don't turn around and take photos of the press box during the uh, when the anthem is paid. Yeah. And I'm complaining on how long it's taking. And uh, you know what, though, I miss the equivalent of this Jack Morris's one nothing shutout of ten innings. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday night, the Fulda High School band. Played oh. the national, the national anthem, and nobody at the gave, twins game, and nobody gave me gave me a heads up. Really, and they said they were pretty good too, and I don't know how they got enough people to put a band together because there's about fifteen students a class now, twenty. Yeah, so I don't know. Everybody must be handed an instrument. They used to be very strong in music. Were you in the band? <laughs> oh no, God, no! But my brother. <laughs> was made my, you know, he was the first child of my mother 
who loved music, she made him take piano lessons. Oh, boy. The least likely human being in history to, to, to take piano lessons. And then she made him go out for the music at, in school, too. And he ended up with a flute. He ended up, <laughs> he ended up for a year, as a baby, just because if he was in the marching band. Yeah. He didn't want to have anything heavy to carry. I don't know. <laughs> so he had the flute. And my mother came to me with piano lessons and that. I said, no, we, we're not doing that. Not happening. Well, not, not happening. I'm not going to do so, that. I love you, Mom, baby, but it ain't happening. Yeah. So, uh, but no, I was not in it. But that was kind of by mutual consent. But don't you wish today you could go to somebody's house and sit down and um, just start tickling the ivory? Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd yeah. be fun. But the other, uh, the other problem is that they weren't impressed with the voice either because I remember being in the fourth grade and when they had the little, they got that little grade school choir you know yeah they just told me to mouth the words right <laughs> you know so i w- i also rejected the piano lessons yeah. oh really and and regret it mm-hmm. it would be nice to be able to play the piano but i well, i never caught on yes well my cousin cecilia who was uh would sometime use our piano before she got her own one ended up being a great Church organist, oh, and yeah. piano player, and gave lessons down in St. James, and oh, yeah. she was she was wonderful. And uh, but uh, she she had to carry the family uh, torch. And my my sister was a good pianist. I'm too. desperately yeah. trying to find the clip of you singing "Oh Holy Night" right now. <laughs> well, that's not too very good. No, <laughs> no, it's no, not. No, we were. I don't know. I think I've kind of gotten more of a bass than I should have been. Should been. Pat, so. the White Sox aren't very good. Boy, they can figure out how to lose a game. Mm-hmm. They work hard at it. They're bad in every facet of the game. <laughs> Their pitching sometimes is okay. Bad fielding. Dylan Cease is a good. I like him. Giolito, I'd take him. But uh, they get a little frustrated, I think, the mm-hmm. fact that they only catch about half of them. Well, probably. we walked in Friday evening. And I had three young men with me, and the first pitch of the series was golfed into the outfield. And I thought, oh, boy, the Sox. That was only his second home run of the season. And then Lance Lynn said, we can't have the Twins losing their their series opener. My God, is he awful. I'd say that was an accomplishment to give up two home runs to uh, a buck because I read today on Twitter that it be take away those two home runs. And our guy Buck is one for 38 with 20 strikeouts. Ooh, He's got a couple of walks in wow. there, too. So uh, so way to go, Lance, to give up those two home runs. Yeah, those were nice. Those but were the nice. White, how about the right fielders? On Friday night, you, were, you might have left. This was a little later in the game. But when the right fielder fell down. Yep. For no apparent reason. None whatsoever. A run to score yeah. and put him ahead, right? I think yes, I saw that. And then... Yesterday, they're in the uh, 10th, right? Mm -hmm. And the Whiteys have scored. And we got a guy on third, and we're going to pop up for the second out, Mm -hmm. right? And now the guy's going to be standing on third with two outs, and you need a base hit to score him. And the right fielder comes in and finally catches that pop up, and then he falls down for no apparent reason. <laughs> he's on his knees. He's down there on the knees. He ends up throwing his looper in, and they score the tie run. And then they end up winning in the, the next inning, which is uh, the fat little catcher hit into a double play, and it looked like they weren't going to score again in the 12th. And then uh, who got the base hit? Jeffers. Uh, Jeffers got the base hit to right field to win the game. I don't like the fat little catcher. I don't like Vasquez. him. Although he won the game for him on uh, Saturday, right? Yeah. I don't like him, though. I, don't, I mean, not as a human You know being. what he is? He's a good framer, though. I don't mind. Uh, he can frame the ball. Yeah, the framing. Who I caught yesterday? Jeff, Jeffers started Jeffers. it, but then they hit it. They pinched He caught him. a ball in his throat. Yeah, he got it bad, and then he yeah. ended up winning the game. But he would have left the game if, there would have, if the other catcher hadn't been used as a pinch hitter for Matt Walner, who mm-hmm. was two for two. But a lefty was pitching, so we send the fat little catcher up there instead. I'm Who's glad you in mentioned tonight, the Seahawks, the Seattle Mariners, or the Mariners. I mean, he's yeah. got to stop doing that, Rocco. Wow. He's got to stop pinch hitting for the one at bat in the sixth inning when he yes. There's a the there's sixth. there's more of a game after this, Rocco. Mm-hmm. He keeps doing that with a guy. Why well, are you? This was a little later in the game, but maybe the seventh. But you're then he was the last position player. They were they were out of position players, and if what if if Jeffers can't 
Yeah, well, I guess Vasquez was in the lineup as a uh, uh, DH then or something, so I guess he could have caught him. But uh, yeah, yeah, it, I agree with you. He blows the blows the whole roster pinch hitting a lot more than he has to. Yeah. So anyway, they uh, could be a little steamy there Wednesday afternoon. Ooh. That uh, that yard can get a little yeah. hot. And Are it's they off to be, Thursday? They're mm-hmm. off here Thursday because yeah. Thursday's supposed to be the the bad the real one. And then they, uh, yeah, they're off Thursday, and then they go to Kansas City, where it's, where it'll be Usually toasty. Usually warm. Toasty, but you don't have to worry about getting surrounded by a lot of people, I wouldn't think, down there. You'll have way. your own section. The Royals are uh, well on their way to losing 120 games. You know, when you think we're, we're constantly giving this hysteria about how hot it is, and I started thinking about covering baseball when I covered it for 10 years. I remember some hot days in New York and Chicago and Baltimore. Baltimore was the worst. Are you kidding me? It was steamy and hot. I've told the story about I'm covering a doubleheader in Baltimore, and then I'm supposed to get on a plane, and this is when you could change your tickets, right? Mm -hmm. Get on a plane and fly to Oakland for the All-Star game. Mm -hmm. So we're in there in that last week, that last Sunday, and it was so hot. How oh, hot was it? I talked my way onto the, the Twins were chartering home for mm-hmm. one of the few times. I talked my way onto the Twins charter so I could fly home Sunday night and shower because mm-hmm. <laughs> I couldn't stand it. It was so damn hot there, and it was a doubleheader that day, too. And that's in Oakland. No, this was fly- This was in, oh, Baltimore. in Baltimore. And, and you I went, was supposed okay. to go coast to coast to yeah. ball- that night at Nine o'clock or yeah. something. Yeah. I have a travel question, and I've never covered a team, but why couldn't you shower when you got to your hotel in Oakland? Because it was being extra several hours. Oh, I see. Yes, I couldn't stand it. And you caught a flight to Oakland the next, next day. Next day, next morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, could, you could get there in time for all the the stuff they were doing on at the All Star game. I think that was the one old All Star game that went fifteen innings or went for hours. Mm-hmm. Chris, my son Chris, came out with me. We went to the game. He had to sit in the stands for like two days waiting for that game to end. Then we stayed around and we stayed. And I went to my only game ever at Candlestick Park. Oh, baseball game! I never was there. Game. I was never there. God, it was cold. Yeah. <laughs> it was. And you'd heard all the legend about how bad it could get in there in July. It was amazing. It was stuff blowing. There were big cardboard. Boxes blowing around and down in the in the uh, the corridor there, there's stuff flying all over. It's unbelievable. Well, Horace Stoneham tells the great story about there being shown this point of land yeah, oh, on a gorgeous, glass, glass calm out there. day, and yeah. he said they didn't tell us what summer was like. No, no, <laughs> they didn't. Well, that's the famous Chubb Feeney story. That was Chubb was his guy, you know, yeah. that built the stadium, and Chubb was. Chubb always went out there in the morning and as yeah. they were building it and thought, God, this is wonderful. Isn't it great? He went out there one day at 2 in the afternoon and the scaffolding, the guys are hanging on to the scaffolding and <laughs> stuff's blown. He says, what's going on here? And they said, that's the hawk. It happens every afternoon mm-hmm. at this time of day. You know, that, that, what a weather phenomenon, though. It's on that point. I think know. of guys our age. That was their ballpark. Oh, God, uh, yeah. To follow the Giants. Oh, yeah. You know, that's they, where... Uh, they played about three years in Seal Stadium when yeah. they were building that one. Yeah, that was there. And, and, and night, Willie Mays had this unbelievable career playing in... In the in worst weather in baseball. wind. Uh, was it you telling me, because I was relaying this information to my baseball nut 11-year-old son... How many more home runs would Willie have hit had he not played at the Polo Grounds? At the, well, at the Polo I mean, Grounds. Well, Polo Grounds was huge and left. Oh, no, down the line it was. Before they moved to down the line, it was it was shallow, but left center and. But was right it you center. telling me he would have hit about I don't know fifty well, sixty? I think more? Candlestick is where I was telling because the it was wind can- they okay. had hundreds. You know, he used the, he he hit the ball to right field, but if the wind was blowing in from the bay, you couldn't. get Because during the derby, base. we were going through the all time home yeah. run leaders in baseball. Yeah, yeah, and I refuse. I'm one of those guys that refuses to acknowledge. Barry, I said yeah. Henry Aaron's still the home run. I think team. I think Willie 
had a couple of years in the reserves too, where he had to miss some. Mm -hmm. he, uh, oh, I didn't yeah, know that. When he was uh, okay. well, all those guys, you know that. They weren't World War II guys, but they were Korean War guys. So they, you know, some of them didn't get to play full schedules. They had to take their two weeks. Rodney had to take his, remember that? Rodney yeah. had to take his two weeks off. Yeah. Keep him out of Vietnam. Okay. You know, we had, we had, uh, you know, the Star Tribune commenters are, every newspaper is the same, but the Star Tribune commenters are in a class by themselves. <laughs> and, uh, that's not a compliment, ladies was, and gentlemen. We're no longer running comments that I can find That's online. a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. Uh, we, we had some guy, what was it? I wrote, I can't even remember what I wrote. It was something about baseball in the 70s. And this guy in the maybe late 60s, 70s, and this guy had this incredible scream about how they screed, how they were just a bunch of draft dodgers and didn't have to go to Vietnam and, you know, and uh, it's just a little, little bitterness left over here, pal. Wow. I mean, none of us wanted to go. None of us. Baseball in the 60s was really a strange time. I want to rewatch the Ken Burns Baseball documentary on the on the on the sixties. Mm -hmm. The uh, nothing could have been further from the culture of the United States at that time than baseball. Yeah. It was the summer of love and the hippies oh, yeah. and the anti-war and yeah. here's baseball just plodding along mm -hmm. like it always was. Sure. Yeah. The uh, with uh, Calvin and nineteen other like-minded, yeah. <laughs> like-minded people who. Now, America, love it. That wasn't love it or leave it, though. Was that love it or leave it? Was that when love it or leave it Might started? Have been. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, you know, and when push came to shove, the, uh, the, uh, American, uh, you know, the, the, the number of people who were still supporting the Vietnam War at the end was not very high. So no. it kind of changed. We were. All right. Brian Harmon. Hey. What a worthy what winner, a, I what thought. What a putter. Oof, Gee, made some whiz. putts, didn't he? Yeah. He, he made those two bogeys, and then he hit the one in the gorse. Mm -hmm. And you thought he was going to make 50, and they hit a great shot. And after that, he just made putts. He, uh, wh why did he get challenged by that idiot on the course, I wonder, who said, you don't have the stones for this. Did you read that story? Oh, I didn't know. Somebody didn't. yelled out at him, you don't have the stones for this, Harmon. And what he said time? that buoyed him. What time of day? Uh, yeah. Late in the round. Late in the round. Yeah. Okay. That's funny because it doesn't happen in Britain. But, you but I not. did hear a few shouts. Yeah. Of, uh, you know. That's my new favorite is. course on the Roto. Did you like I it? I love that place. That looked like the most charming little place I've and, ever seen. And it's, it's that part of England that goes up around Scotland, right? It's north of Scotland. It's north basically. and west. Yeah, it's up. It's on the water. Just you like see whales know. across the bay. It's, so it's on the North Sea, is it Irish Sea? Irish Sea. Okay, all right. So okay, all right. I'm, I, I was I was looking at the map, but I couldn't Home figure of the out Beatles, what it, and I was uh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, but it wasn't that, in Liverpool. It was in Holyoke. Uh, Holyoke. Holyoke. That's right. But isn't Holyoke a suburb of Liverpool? I don't know. A lot of these places, you know, are were named after the rich people who ended up assembling at that. That's where they played their summer golf. Mm -hmm. That was not necessarily the Liverpool, but I, I would, it, it, maybe it is a suburb. I don't know where Liverpool is, to be I honest. was pleasantly surprised that we weren't shown the picture of Penny Lane very often. Mm -hmm. I thought for sure we'd see that once a day. We mm -hmm. didn't see that. How about the, uh, the what uh, what I enjoyed is what they, how they, how they react to driving rain. Just keep playing. And they play. They play. <laughs> I thought that Nance had a very good line when he's talking about the caddies under the umbrella. He says, that guy has an entire pro shop right. in that bag <laughs> to keep them dry, try to keep everything well, dry. It's the same as in Scotland. If you don't play in the rain, you won't play. No, that's true. Well, you know, the year that uh, Muirfield 2002, that's what, that's what waylaid Tiger because yep. he got caught out in the yep. storm. That cloud, uh, Chris, yep. was uh, a beautiful bluebird morning, but the forecast was bad on Saturday. And the Firth of Forth is out there, big body of water, you know. And this cloud appears over mm -hmm. that. 
and it looked like that screen. It was as black as that screen, only huge. And you were saying, uh -oh. I was out on the golf course and said, eh, I think I'll go back in and watch this on TV. And about two seconds after I got in there, oh, yep. it came down. <laughs> It was, uh, it, it, the weather There wasn't ever even any consideration to pausing, was there? No. And no. the other part of it is the way, the rain is so unreliable and dispersed and broken up that at parts of the golf course, it was a drizzle and the other parts, it was just this driving rain. It was, uh, it's not a consistent, uh, consistent thing, but. All right. So still... there you have it. Mom's defending right. the guy. It. Wasn't that the when oh, you were it was Muirfield? <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah, that's adjust yourself. You had to turn it in circles. <laughs> yeah, every day we I did that like two, three days in a row, didn't I? And right. it broke up every time. It would break what up. was the phone bill for that? I have no idea. <laughs> we weren't work. paying it. No, <laughs> but I can't remember. What kind of uh, cell phones we had then? It was a little flipper. Obviously. Well, it was only what O two. Yeah, yeah, it was O two. So it was. Oh, a I'm sure. It was. I didn't even know we had flippers in O two. Well, because we had. What were the ones that uh, first came out that all the companies were using? Oh, the like uh, was that the telecom? Is that what it was called? Blackberries or something? I no, Blackberry was advanced. That was no, probably and some other thing. But we had those. But I couldn't take that one to Scotland, <laughs> and. Uh, well, Joe and I had plenty of these experiences when I was out on the road, and we we did two hour shows with me in a hotel room yeah. trying to get back to Harmon. No one had him on their radar, but he's no, had well, a hell he of a career. Good. Well, plus he he was in he was in the wasn't he in contention at the U.S. Open? Yeah, for a while? yeah, but he's he a, he's, hanging a around. he's made an amazing number of top ten finishes. Yes, because he can putt, unlike. The curly-haired Scotsman. And that course, Irishman, I mean. that course didn't need you to hit it 350 oh, yards. Oh, God, no. Just don't hit it. And you know what they did a fine job of, all the leaders? Nobody got in those pots. Oh, I saw a few in there. Not too many of them. Kneeling no. on one leg outside it, the other <laughs> leg inside it. Of course, I had to regale my wife in the time that I was in one of those it's pots and knocked it in the hole. A miracle, <laughs> and she had no appreciation. The for Scottish that. miracle. What she, she said, what this meant? She said, "Look at those holes." I said, "Yeah, well, I know how to get out of them. Yeah, smack it into the wall and have it pop up in the air, and then right in the hole." <laughs> <laughs> I love that golf course, Dunbar, man. Oh, right yeah. out on the sea, you yeah. walk right out on the sea, and then you come back. Oh, but that, but. That that I think that I don't know how they built this new course, you know, this course Renaissance, but the the Bear, Bearwicks up there, the other go they're those nine holes out of town, nine yeah. holes back. And after school, the course is crowded with kids walking home. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> Dogs and frizzies. And... School, it is. Yeah, it's uh, it is an amazing place. But uh, we've had two rather. Nondescript major winners in a row, though. Wyndham Clark and yep. then this guy. It's mm -hmm. not, uh, we don't have the uh, dominant player. And Justin Thomas's struggles mm -hmm. have him playing up here this week because they did they did the fav one favor to Hollis and uh, the other tournament that's next week. They reduced the number of people going to the FedEx Cup from 125 to 70. Mm -hmm. So when it was 125, nobody had to show up and play and get points. But Justin Thomas actually needs points to make the top 70. Is he trying to make the FedEx Cup or the Fed Ryder Cup? FedEx Cup. Yeah, I know. Was he trying to make the playoffs? Yeah, he's 75th right now. But he also is trying to make the Ryder well, Cup, isn't he? certainly, yeah. And I don't think he's... Now, you can't... you got to put Harmon on the club, don't you? The way he's played lately, maybe. I don't know. Well, how do you not know. put the British Open winner on the Ryder Cup team for the U.S.? Where yeah. are they playing? They're playing Rome. in Italy? Rome. We're doing yeah, this again? Yeah, they're in Rome. <laughs> we did yeah. that no, we did that last no, week. No, we got to figure it out. Is Mrs. Harmon any relation to former Pirates outfielder Andy Van Slyke? Kelly uh, Van Slyke is her name. I was going to ask you guys about that. I don't think so. Okay. But I don't He's know. a Georgia Bulldog. Mm -hmm. He's from Savannah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know a lot about him. He's little. He's about 5'7". He's 36. 36. He's been at it a while. And yeah. he's a Great. lefty with the longest waggle except for maybe Cantley. The Great. longest pre-shot More than routine. Sergio? 
He, Sergio got over that. Great, oh. uh, a great player, Georgia, at the yeah. University of Georgia. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's... Uh, or will he take the live money now that he's... I doubt no, that he the would live know. Money, they, they, the new deal, they can't move. They can't come and recruit. He got oh, they $3 can't. million for this victory. They can't come and recruit. I did not know yeah, that. that's part of the deal. You can't read them anymore. I see. I guess maybe if somebody if somebody wants to switch, I suppose. Dustin Johnson and Brooks Kepka were miserable failures. Yep. Dustin got, Dustin got, you could see Justin, Dustin got the bad attitude because he shot like 82. Whatever on, happened right. to Bubba? Bubba went live, right? Yeah, Bubba was. Why, Bubba. Isn't he, why wasn't he in the British Open? Uh, or was he? I would think his major exemption still exists. I don't know. When's the last time he won a major? He won... He won two masters. He won two masters. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's a maybe it's a Who's uh, playing this weekend, Patrick? For us? Yeah. Here? Not a lot of them. Uh Justin Thomas by far the big name. Is the defending champ coming back? Tony yes, Fino. Tony Fino's there. Tony's yeah. coming back. Yeah. Tony's a player. Tony plays. Bubba's right. last win was the twenty fourteen Masters. So he still he played then. He, he also won he that in it ten years. But 20, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he you know. won that in 2012 and finished second at the PGA in 2010. Yeah, he can't. He's uh, he's not worth a damn anymore. He's uh, it's an odd game. They got this kid though that I uh, wrote a little about Sunday, uh, the uh, the kid from Blaine, who won the uh, Caleb Van Argen. Who was uh, uh, going to be a senior, uh, fifth year senior at Valparaiso, yeah. Blaine kid? He won the state open at uh, Oak Ridge by nine strokes. Oof. And then he shot 193 at Minneapolis. He was 23 under par, Oof. and he won the state amateur by 12 strokes Holy last crap. week. So he just, I talked to him. Is he, he said, in college? Yeah. He's Where? Be, Valparaiso. Valparaiso. Valparaiso, okay. Yeah, yeah, and he's going back there. He doesn't have these visions of grandeur, but. Uh, Is that a big golf school? I didn't know not that. Not really, but oh. he, he didn't have, I mean, he, he was an okay, a good high school player here, but he didn't have any, they weren't fighting to get him. Okay. But Hollis got him in the tournament. I, I'd called up Hollis last week. I said, are you going to get this kid an exemption? He said, I used him up already, but they must have, must have figured out. They found out, a way. <laughs> they must have figured out a way to get him in there. Nice kid. So I, I only talked to him on the phone, so I don't know. But, uh, yeah, he was uh, 23 under and 16 or 17 under. So he was like 40 under at those two golf courses. Are you going to be on the grounds all four days? No, days. I'm going to be there tomorrow, and then I'm going to be there Friday, and then I'm going to be there Sunday. Okay, she's going to be steamy for that tournament. Yes, it is. And uh, but I Saturday looks like the only day that you better look out for rain and delays and stuff. So, but I got a hunch I'm going to be tent boy. I don't walk too good anymore, and that <laughs> golf course there's no short walk. No, nope. you know if you want to go someplace. So. Uh, now, how's she looking there? Radar has shown this rain to have already gone through the Twin Cities, but I can't tell because this radar has been... Was Friday night when we got the half-hour delay? It's still raining, according to no, my phone. That Saturday. was Saturday. That was Saturday. Saturday night, we got the half-hour delay, and as a man who lives four minutes from the target field, it was Bluebird. I said, what the hell are they doing? Apparently, there was a thunderstorm down in Bloomington, and they decided, just in case it decided to go north, which it didn't, they were going, what, 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 what? Let's go Don't Mets. Don't believe your weather, man. Just play. If you look at the sky and say, <laughs> Don't, ah, don't okay. believe your weather, look man. Look at the sky. Let's go. Oh, wait a minute. I can't forget, Joe. What? Guess what we're doing today. I don't. We are adding to the Roycey list. We are? Yes. Patrick over the weekend issued the following I hate the term sweeper. A sweeper. I do not like well, the sweeper. How is it refused? Here we go. The we had the slider, right? Yeah. But we now have a slider that breaks a little more, more than the side normal to side. side. So the official 
<laughs> baseball wieners, uh, you know, and analytical now wieners. A sweeper. Now we got to have the sweeper. No. So I love Coral, Corey Provis, but he's great. Uh, he throws us. We got sweepers. We got this constant sweepers. And putting the barrel drive, in driving the barrel. me out. But but the sweeper. We got to. It's, it's, was that a slider? Was that a sweeper? Well, let's let's get the ge- geometry out here and figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and they came after me because I said the uh, the board weenies mm-hmm. had decided to add the sweeper mm-hmm. and. Oh, they got and, after and Patrick. They're after sending big things. The, the gyro on it is different than the other <laughs> stuff. And, you know, you got a big slider and a little slider. We don't need sweeper. You're going to end up. <laughs> I do not like sweeper. But I did just set them off this oh, yeah, morning. Oh, you did. Didn't yes, they? you did. They were, yes. Uh, I'm not backing off though. I'm no, anti sweeper. I, I tend to agree with you. Mm-hmm. That's that it, you you nailed it. That is based purely out of boredom. Yes. And well, who you know, came I, up with it? Uh this, this some weenie. The L, L, MLB statistical people decided and some guy said we, Wieners. We've heard from pitchers and we could when we were putting it in a slider, it was not actually a slider, it broke more. And they were actually sweepers ah. with a different gyro rating. So we're doing this for the pitchers. So whatever the hell they're talking about, I still, you know, it's it's like, you know, you got your big curveball and you got your little curveball, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. You got the big, you got the, 12 the, to six. You got the tight spin well, one. Well, you can have a sweeping curveball. Tight, tight curve spin ball. one. Yeah, you know, well, that's the sweeper is sort of a, I don't know. But why do we need two different sliders? You know, you could have the big slider mm-hmm. and the little slider. The first time I the heard quick it, little slider or the bigger slider. The first time I heard it was a sunny gray start for the Twins, and it was a national crew doing the game. So I don't remember what who they were playing, but that's the first time I heard sweeper. And I went, "What the hell's a sweeper? Mm-hmm. What did so, I miss? I didn't get the memo." So uh, this came up because when I told the story about. My start in Wyndham as a high school junior, mm-hmm. when I had to relieve myself, mm-hmm. I got I got <laughs> I got bombed by the. They almost there's a river. The Des Moines River goes by. They damn near hit two in the river. It's about a hundred yards out there. And then I went out, and then Charlie Bright came in, and he couldn't throw any strikes. And then Steinhorst came in, and he couldn't throw any strikes. So I had to make the long, humiliating walk from third base back to the mound. You know, He's back! To pitch. And the Wyndham How fellas, could you relieve yourself? Oh, yeah, it happens. Yeah, yeah, I had to come back in because I could throw strikes, which they would knock the living crap out of. <laughs> but I, they were across the plate. And the taunting was merciless. <laughs> Which was, of course, allowed. It was it was encouraging back then. Yes, you know, sixty years ago. Yes, you know, he's it back. Was, it was burst. <laughs> well, I said today, I know what my problem was. I threw too many sweepers. Yes, yeah. Yeah. way too, many, too sweepers. many sweepers. Yeah, they were hitting my sweeper. I should have written to something else. Uh, to piggyback on that, Joe wants to create his own list. You have the stuff of things you don't like. <laughs> yeah. Joe wants to start a list of things he can no longer write. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, really? We're up to eights, threes. Threes. There was something else we added to that, though, last uh, week. What was it? Oh, Q. Three. I can't make a Q. Can't make a Q, I can't Q make anymore. can't make a Q anymore? No. I can't make an eight, a Q, or a three. I got to I gotta ask you a question. All right. How are you when they say, uh, sign this with your finger? I don't like that. <laughs> I might I, as well put my elbow on it. Right, it, it, it doesn't just, look good. Yeah, it doesn't. It's, I just I, get a J get, out, get, and the rest of it's a straight line. Yeah. I like that. Why? How are we? Why are they having us do that? You know who would not approve? Harmon. That's no. not a good autograph. No, Harmon would be. <laughs> Uh, come on, Harmon, move it along here, will you, buddy? Harmon, Harmon, good, great. I got a couple of. Uh, I have Harman. one too, and it is a fantastic, a fantastic signature. Uh, signature, yes. Took pride in that. Somewhere when I you, have DiMaggio, and that was a good. Was that writing. right? Really? Yeah. yeah. On a baseball? On a piece of paper. Okay. Really? Yeah. Where'd you get that? Sid and I were walking into the oh, ballpark. Sid and, he, Sid and Joe were like yeah, this, right? During, an, I think, an All-Star game at White Sox Park yeah. back in the day. 
and DiMaggio was there, and Sid hailed him, and, of course, Joe trotted over to talk to him. And mm-hmm. As long as I was standing there like a dork, I said, can I please have your autograph? <laughs> You know, that's frowned upon you know, nowadays. Yeah. It is amazing. The guys, the people that guy knew in the 50s and 60s oh, from man. that generation. Yeah. DiMaggio, Ted Williams, and he were like this. Yeah. Really? You I know? didn't know he was. I knew Williams, but I didn't know DiMaggio. Well, because he. Was it George? Because they of George. knew they were never going to be hurt. No, just was hell. This was before George. And but I bet, is that how he like, established the relationship with George? No, not with DiMaggio. He knew DiMaggio from going to the World Series in 1955 because he's a guy that had burst up to you and tell you that, uh, you know, he had no um, no governor as far as approaching people. Sure. So they, uh, they all knew Sid. And? Well, Prince is a great story. Yeah, Prince. Hey, hey. Don't Prince I want to talk to. Hey, hey, Prince. Prince. <laughs> Prince. Hello, Mr. Hartman. Hello, Mr. Hartman. <laughs> it is That's amazing. one of my favorites. It is wow. amazing. The, the people he knew are just, um, I mean, John Rose, Bo Schembechler, biggest jackass in American history, you know, yeah. just a, a terrible guy. And John Rowe goes, the first time he goes there was said to go to Michigan they, they, he says, yeah, can I talk to Bo? Sid goes up to the office, blows right by the secretary, right. and goes in and sits down with Bo. <laughs> right. You know? <laughs> Same with Bobby Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby was, you know, he was really tight with Bobby. So, What year did you think that that All-Star game was, Joe? Oh, 78. 80, 80? Uh, and it was at the White Sox Stadium? Well, name me when the White Comiskey. Sox had an All-Star White game. Sox had it in 83 at Comiskey. Yeah, that was the one. They might have went to that. Might have been 83. 83. That was the one the American League finally won after losing yeah. hundreds of them in a row. God, you're right. They won 5-3. to, five to three. No, 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 no. Not that one. Okay. They had another one in Comiskey. They had one with, uh, they scored a bunch of runs. What? Okay. You're it had to be 83. Could have been earlier. My column had not yet been taken away from me. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you and Sid were still oh, yeah. survivable, yeah. even yeah. though you yeah. tried to. Once the dome was built, did he let up on you or not? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, that was. But his superiors didn't. No. Let okay. Up on me. Okay. So that oh, was man it had to be earlier in eighty three. Yeah, it was earlier. All right. Look, um, look and, well, here I'll go. Eighty three was at back in the seventy. Freddie Lynn. Yeah. So eighty two Montreal. Okay, eighty one Cleveland. In, sometime in the mid seventies. Eighty Dodger Stadium. Kingdom in seventy nine. San Diego in seventy eight. Yankee Stadium in seventy seven. No. Uh, no. Veteran no. Stadium seventy six. County Stadium seventy five. Had to be eighty three then. Yeah. Seventy four, Three Rivers. But it was Stadium. only five to three. Are you sure? I, I think I'm reading I think it the was thirteen to five. Or I think I'm reading like this that. wrong. Yes, I remember the because uh, this is the American Wikipedia League page. Beat him up after losing ten in a row. Or something. Candlestick in eighty four, and then the Hubert H Humphrey Metrodome in eighty five. Yep. Oh, what a game. when we tried to get Dylan to sing the anthem. Yes, remember we that? did. We should have had him. We should have. We were tight with him when we followed him out to his car. So. All right, what the hey. Let's go here. Let's go, Mets. All right. This is Ricey, and you've heard me discuss my relationship with Josh Arnold for some time. The reason I recommend that you give Josh a call is simple, trust and results. Josh has seen it all when it comes to economic and market conditions. As has been said through all of our relationship, past results do not guarantee future returns. And while that is true, Josh can make sure that your retirement objectives match your investments. You can understand that Josh will make sure you are not paying more in fees than you are are seen in returns. Yep, that is more common than you would like to think in the investment business. Do yourself a favor and have a booking with Josh for the 48-minute free evaluation. This is a no-obligation meeting. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. You will be glad you did. And don't forget to ask him why it is 48 minutes. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involved risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Patrick Royce is a paid endorser.